They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Housewarmings, the outdoor living and fireplace experts. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're in beautiful Gal Ryan Farms out here in Shelby County. We're picking pumpkins and kushaws. We're going to make a kushaw pie at some point in the near future. But tonight we got a great show for you. We're going to go all over the place, see a bunch of stuff. But one thing I really love is lamb. Now, if you've never heard of a lamb merguez sausage, you need to try it. Now, we got this from Marksbury Farms. It is delicious. I'm going to take this lamb merguez sausage, make meatballs out of it, Put that on a bed of linguine with some marinara sauce, and I'm talking good stuff. Let's check that out. Later on, we're going to come back here and pick some pumpkins and talk to the fine folks at Gal Ryan Farms right here in Shelby County, Kentucky. Picking pumpkins. All right, let me tell you something I found out about not too long ago. Lamb merguez sausage. Typically, it's a North African Spain, France, it's kind of a spicy sausage, it's delicious. Now I absolutely love lamb, and I found out uh, Jim Mansfield has been working with Mark's Berry Farm, and they came up with this thing. Now we got this, uh, you can buy this at Mark's Berry Farm. Now they're right outside of uh, Danville in Lancaster, Kentucky. Look them up on the internet, they're great folks, they take pride in what they do, they know all their people they get their meat from, they know each cow before it comes in there. Now, maybe that's too much information, but let me tell you what. Great stuff. Now, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to make some meatballs out of this lamb merguez sausage. Now, it's, uh, it's already got red wine and oregano and red roasted peppers in it. It's got this wonderful smell to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some breadcrumbs, some Italian breadcrumbs, and an egg to hold it together. Let's go ahead and put the egg in there. Now we're going to take some breadcrumbs, and I've got about a pound, pound and a half of this in here. Now, I'm making way too much, but I tell you what, what I don't use for the recipe, I'm just going to eat because they're delicious. Now I'm going to keep working that in there as I need it till they start holding together. I may get Nikki to come in here and see if I can find it. Nikki! You mind pouring me some more breadcrumbs in there? And you can see I'm not measuring this. I'm just kind of working it up as I go along so it kind of starts to hold together. I'm assuming we're probably, by the time we get done, going to have over a cup in here. Now, lamb is extremely good for you. It doesn't have much fat in it. It is, if you've got trouble with digestion, it is really one of the easiest meats to digest. All right, now, that is way too much. I would recommend probably half a pound for this recipe. But I've just got to admit that I'm going to take these off camera. And I'm going to make these into meatballs, and I'm going to eat them for breakfast and for lunch. <laughs> And for and dinner. dinner. All right, I'm gonna get one more little handle. Thank you, Nikki. All right, you're welcome. Thank you very much. She's a good helper. 
but she I had to take her shopping now or something like that. I'm gonna take my pan, put me a little bit of olive oil in there. Oliver oil, as my grandfather would call it. I've taken me a shallot, and I've cut about a half a shallot up and diced it up. Shallots have a nice, wonderful flavor that's somewhere in between a garlic and onion. I've taken a couple cloves of garlic here. I'm gonna press them in here when this gets good and hot. And I'm gonna go start dropping stuff in. And this is really easy, but really, really tasty. Now I'm gonna make just enough for two people here. So I never measure anything, but I know for you guys who are just starting out, you're gonna want a measurement. So I'm gonna say that's probably about a third of a small yellow sweet onion. And I shall it. It already smells like heaven in here. And I'm gonna let those get nice and just slightly brown. All right, now I'm gonna take my garlic press and I'm gonna pop that in there. Don't need a lot, just a little bit. I'm gonna come right back in with some basil pesto. You can buy this at the store. And drop that right on in there. Now it's gonna pop and squall and carry on. I'm gonna put some red wine right in there with that. Now I'm gonna reduce all this down. And I'd say that's about two heaping tablespoons of the basil pesto. Now watch as that red wine will reduce down. And that's just a Pinot Noir. I wish you could smell this. I'm gonna let that reduce down once and then I'm gonna put another one in. Let that reduce down. Now I've got a big old can of diced tomatoes. And I'm probably gonna only use, because I'm cooking for two, I'm probably only going to use about, oh, I don't know, 16 ounces of that. I'm going to bring that in. To reduce some of that acid, I want to take some sugar. You're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to use probably a tablespoon and a half of sugar. Let it get all nice and coined in there. I'm going to come back with a little bit of paste. Picking things up a bit. A little bit of sauce. Now, you can buy mixtures. Now you think, oh, he's got enough seasoning in there with that basil pesto. But you know what? I think anything you cook should be full. I mean, absolutely full of flavor. Now, I think this needs a lot of oregano. So I want to come in with, now normally I'd have some of my own, but I'm gonna put some dried oregano in here. And I'm thinking we're probably gonna to have to put at least a teaspoon and a half of that in there. And see if you cook this in a little dish like this, it's gonna get done quick. Just enough for two folks. And if you're cooking for a big group, you can add more. Here's where you're the boss. I like my sauce sweet, you may not. I like to really cut that acid. I'll come back and add a little bit at a time. I've got a little bit of basil here I'm gonna put in. Now this is dried, because like I said, mine are almost done. That is almost where I want it. I'm gonna let that thicken up just a little bit more. But that's really, really, really flavorful. And I like a lot of oregano in my tomato sauce. I'm gonna get my noodles going, because by the time I set this aside on warm, and get my meatballs ready to go. I want my noodles to be on. This didn't take long. I mean, in just the little bit of time you've been watching this, my sauce is ready to go. I'm gonna set this aside on warm. Got me another pan ready. A Little bit of olive oil. Now, I'm gonna take my meatballs, and depends on what size you want them. And I'm telling you what, this has the best, the absolute best smell to it. All right, 
Look at that, nice and brown. Now they still got a little cooking left to do, so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set this aside over here. Bring my sauce back. Put my meatballs in here. Now what I'm gonna do is once this sauce gets simmering here again, which won't take long, I'm gonna let that go for about another, oh, half hour or so. Let those continue to cook on the inside. And in a minute, we're gonna have something mighty special. Now look what we got going on right here. That's four for me and four for Nikki. Four, five for me and three for Nikki. For seven for Nikki and one for me. There's a lot of ways you can do it. But since we really like each other, we'll probably split it right down the middle. Now, let that get going just a little bit. Turn it back. Let it just simmer slowly. Oh man, this is ready to eat. These lambs were raised in Salvisa, right outside of Salvisa, Kentucky by Jim Mansfield. He sells this several places. One of the places he sells it is Marksbury Farm, right outside of uh, uh, Danville, Lancaster, Kentucky. Oh my goodness, they have the best meats. And they make this sausage, which is fantabulous. And I'm gonna dip this up now. And Nikki likes her Greek and Italian type food. That's a lot of meatballs, which I like. I like a lot of meat. I'm a carnivore. Ooh, you know what? Well, she's in the other room, man. You know, we could just dim the lights down, put on some music. Now, I don't even think that needs any Parmesan. I'm gonna let that cool down a little bit. Ooh. You know, what was this radio? Young. Yeah. This is the night. What a beautiful night, night. and they, they call it Bellatum. I didn't mean for you to lose you up there. <laughs> All right, let's try. You're a good singer. Thank you very much. And it's hot now. Does that not smell delicious? It looks good. That's good. That good. I could just eat meatballs. It's really good. Oh, my. Wow. wow. You see why I made that big thing of meatball? You're a good cook. Mm, 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 mm. He's a good cook. You know what? Right here in Tim Farmer's Coach Kitchen, we're not afraid to try new stuff. Oh my goodness. Mm. You know what? That's got some nice spice in it. It's not over the top. Oh man, that's you gotta good. You got it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Nikki's always making wonderful appetizers, and we had already thawed out some more of that lamb merguez sausage. Now, if you want to try something else, you can use any kind of meat substitute, whatever. But remember, this is Greek, and we like our lamb, so let's check out Nikki's Greek love boat surprise. All right, we're in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen and Nikki Farmer's Country Kitchen. That'd be Nikki Nikki Coco Puff, Nikki Nikki Pop, and you're going to make some lamb merguez sausage. Now let's talk about lamb merguez. You know, we've, we've, we talk about this stuff that uh, try something outside of your comfort zone, try something you've never tried before, but it's a wonderful lamb sausage and you're gonna make a? Kind of a cheese bread. It's actually gonna be a dip. I don't know what we should call it. And it's kind of Greek. A boat. A boat, a boat of cheese. A boat of cheese. <laughs> and I wanna put Greek heritage. I have Greek heritage, so I wanna put Greek stuff in it. So I've got artichokes, spinach, olives, lamb, onions, so we're gonna make a big dip. Cream okay. cheese? Yeah, it's all cream cheese. So cheese basically, is. you're gonna carve your little canoe out. Right. You're gonna put your ingredients in there and you're gonna stick it in the oven, and you can use that as a dip. We're gonna dip chips in it later for crackers. Does that sound yummy? I wanna have some of it. All right. All right, show me what you do. And this, we're gonna use lamb. I've seen people use ham or whatever they want, mm -hmm. but we're gonna make it Greek. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of onions in this. What, now, these are sweet yellow onions. We always use, it seems to me like if, if Onions give you indigestion. The sweet yellow ones don't do it as bad. And I won't put too much because you don't want to overdo it, right? Put some olive oil in here. Mm -hmm. And I want to cook these onions with, I'm only going to use about half this lamb. We're just mm -hmm. going to, that way our cheese dip's going to have a little bit of meat in it. And if you don't, uh, if, if it freaks you out, you can use traditional sausage. Or you can just use cheese. You don't need any meat. Yeah. If someone just wants to do the cheeses, you don't have to do anything. You gonna saute your onions? I wanna saute the onions and I'm gonna put the lamb kinda of in with it too while it's sauteing. Gotcha. We're gonna let those, I wanna cook it a little bit. I want that meat cooked. Do you want all the onions or just that? I know you're not a big onion fan. Oh, if we're sauteing them, I. You'll be all right with it? I say let's right. roll with it. And I only cut maybe a quarter of an onion there. 
And I'm going to use, I don't know how big a package this is. Is this a pound? It's about a pound. Okay, we're going to use half of it. Now again, this is lamb merguez. And they make their own special mix over at Marksbury. Marksbury is such a fine outfit. These guys know where, they know where the beef came from. They know where the lamb comes from. It's and nasty. Oh, doesn't it? Well, Jeremy, go ahead and do my cheese while you're doing that. Go ahead and do And cheese. I'm going to use this basic two packages of cream cheese and eight ounces of cheddar. No and, calories. Right. And actually, you could do, if you want to just do that, you could. You want to mm -hmm. add onions, you want to add mushrooms, but we're going to greek it up a little bit. And this may look kind of gross, but it's actually chopped olives, spinach, and artichokes. Gotcha. Is that okay? I'm going to put that in I there. like all of that. And we got to add a little feta. A little feta. Now this has roasted red peppers in it, this lamb we Some spices such as oregano, and I'll tell you what, it smells wonderful. And I'm going to chop up the feta. And we could blend this with a blender, but I think I want it a little bit chunky. You want it chunky? Mm -hmm, I like it chunky. Your... You know, you think there's a lot of pig farms in Kentucky. But did you know now, today, there are more meat goats in Kentucky than there are pigs? Did I you know, know that? I didn't know that. But think about it. As you drive up and down the road, you see a lot of goats. And I think more and more people are catching on to this lamb and goat craze that's going on around the country. Some good, good meat. This is, now, you got your oven preheating to what? 350. 350. We're going to let it go maybe 45 minutes. We'll watch it till it gets bubbly, till it looks good to us. You want your bread to burn. Right. That's ready to roll. Is it good? Yep. All right. You want it in? Yep. Pour it in there. And that's our little bit of meat. All right. I'm cutting the, uh, cutting the canoe here. All right. Just make a little boat, and this is going to be our little serving dish. And you know what? Um, Patricia Thompson got us a really cute fish dish. Oh, yeah. She gave us on the cruise, so I think we need to serve it on that. And she got you a little platter you can actually put your chips on. Well. And I think the pigs would enjoy this. The extra. They've been eating a lot of bread here lately. How do you like that? Beautiful. That's my bread cutting skills. Just rip it out of there and make us a little. So we take all a little had, more out of there. We've all had bread bowl salads. Just pull some more out of here. Pour a little more out, you think? Mm -hmm. Just give us a little. There you go. And we are going to fill. Yum. This is our. You can put some cheese. pine nuts in there too if you want, or different you know, I, things. I'm going to salt and pepper it on the top when we're done. That smells absolutely wonderful. It does smell good, dinner. Now, now you talk about a heavenly little dip, not. The reason I know, obviously, is you've made this before. And when you're done, you can eat the bread. We'll tear it apart. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get it all in there, what do you think? Yeah, cram it on in there. Do you wanna add some pepper? You go ahead. All right, you like a lot of pepper. <laughs> I like a pupple. That's it. Wouldn't you like to be a pupple too? How Tastes about good that? already. All right, you're doing that at 350, right? All right, and when it's done, we'll get some crackers and we'll put it on a fancy platter. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's out of the oven. And we got to thank uh, Patricia and Glenn Thompson, which were on our cruise with us. Got us the perfect little serving tray That's for good. your Greek cheese boat yeah green cheese boat now i mean golly you got you got everything's really healthy for you kind of kind of here <laughs> except for the cream we didn't put cheese. any butter in there but you know what it smells heavenly it's a nice spinach based dip with all kinds of goodies in it Careful, it's really it's hot. hot yum you like that oh yeah mm -mm. you know what that's really good it's a great thing to serve up for your friends who like dips before a party appetizer whatever it's actually really, really, like really it. tasty. Mm. I like it too. Mm, yeah, that's absolutely really good. What is it? Let's call it the Greek love boat. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> the Greek love boat. Mm. It's too hot. And when you're done, you can eat the canoe. Mm-hmm. 
Mrs. Farmer, exceptional job. Thank you, Mr. Very Mr. proud Farmer. of you. Thank you, Mr. Farmer. All right, now that was some yummy stuff. But let's go visit Shelby County. This is the perfect time of year. All times of year are good to come out and visit. But this time of year, bring the kids out. It's a lot of fun. Gal Ryan Farms in Shelby County. All right, this is Randy Galrine at Galrine Farms. Imagine that, out here in Shelby County. Let me tell you what, as, as I'm looking around, I see chickens, turkeys, all kinds of critters, and this huge, fast place with pumpkins and hay, and it looks like a kid's paradise. It is a kid's paradise, and also for adults, too. It's a great place to come out with your family and visit and uh, learn about the animals and go pick a pumpkin, and we just got it built a new farm market, and it's just full of fall produce, and. We've got a bakery in there with delicious baked goods. And this is just, we go, uh, we take people on hay rides out to the, our pumpkin patch. And we've got a corn maze and straw pyramids, straw activities. On the weekends, we do pony rides, braille train rides. We have a lot of fun out here. Now, you've been in operation for how many years again? We've been uh, doing this for about 25 years. Now, we came out here through the week, I mean, uh, but there's still folks out here. Is this all the time you have folks out here running around? Pretty much. We do school groups all during the mornings, and they're out of here about 1 o'clock, and then the afternoons we have the public come in and uh, go on hay rides, and that's what we do in the fall. And in the springtime, we raise flowers here. We have 10 greenhouses full of beautiful flowers. In the summertime, we've got our market with all of our yummy vegetables, and uh, so right now, just in the fall uh, mode, just people coming out, going to the pumpkin patch. Now, what are your hours of operation if somebody wanted to come out here and take a look around? Well, we are here Saturday 10 to 6, Sunday 1 to 5, and during the week we are here from 9 to 6 every day. Now, what do we have to do to get the Grand Tour today, kind of take a look around? Would you take us on that move? Look around? Sure. What we got behind us here? Is this like a petting zoo or just? This is our petting zoo behind us, and we have all kinds of uh, farm animals in here, so we have donkeys horse, goats, sheep, um, chickens, ducks, rabbits, and it's kind of a hands-on petting zoo where the kids can actually go in and, and pet the animals, and so it's a lot of fun. And a lot of kids that come out here, they come from the city, they've never been able to get up close to some of these animals, so it's a lot of fun for them. All right, let's talk about kushaws. What's a kushaw? A kushaw is green and white, and you can make kushaw pie out of it, and um, it's just a type of squash. Now, I knew that, but I had to ask you. What, how do you know, how do you pick one out that's ready to make a pie? Does it have to be plenty ripe? Is there any special way to check this? We've been wanting to make kushaw pie for a long time on the show. Well, we don't pick them until they're ripe. And so um, when they get a little dry on the end of the stem, we go through, our guys go through and pick them, and they're all ripe inside the market. So they're really uh, vibrant green and white when they get, get ripe. Is there any secret? How much, what part of it do you use for the pie? The neck. Use the neck part for the pie. All right, we're going to make us a kushaw pie from right here at Galline Farms. And let's take a look around. We're just going to go around and look inside, and, uh, and uh, I might ride a goat. Okay. You got a saddle? Yeah, we do have saddles. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was just kidding. All right, let's take a tour. <laughs> You know, when you said we're going to the pumpkin patch, I thought I was just going to see orange pumpkins. You've got white pumpkins, Cinderella pumpkins, brown, blue, red, 
kushaws, more and more kushaws. What's, what's up with all these pumpkins? Well, we mix them all up out here for people so that when they come out, they can get whatever they want. If they want to get a kushaw, they can pick a kushaw. They, we've got the old cow pumpkins, which the older people say make great uh, pies. And uh, we have the old normal orange pumpkins. We have big stem pumpkins. We just, and then of course we have the white pumpkins, which everybody loves. That's probably their favorite are the white ones. So for, for eating? Not so much for eating. The white ones are just for decorating. Gotcha. Well, Nikki's got handfuls and handfuls and handfuls of pumpkins. She's going to break me up in the pumpkin patch. But you know what? This is so cool. And again, tell people your hours one more time so they know when to come out, especially this time of year. Yeah. On the weekends, we're here Saturdays 10 to 6 and Sunday 1 to 5. We're open to the public and we're also open all during the week till 6 o'clock, 10 to 6. You ever see the great pumpkin out here? All the time. <laughs> Hey, don't forget to check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Also, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com for recipes you may not have seen before. Also, check out some shows you might not have seen. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats right here on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. See you next week with a brand new show. Special thanks to Kentucky Beer Cheese and Weisenberger Mills.